throughout my life I've been interested in being out in the hills, doing kind of most hill activities really, skiing in the winters, ice climbing in the winters, in the summers walking and rock climbing. I think it's fair to say I've got quite a, an interest in snow. I did my PhD looking at slab avalanches and the, the way they release and I think that detailed study of snow has given me a further sort of appreciation of it and its subtleties and its complexity. Quite a lot of people do call me Dr Snow, so it's, the name seems to have stuck. During the winters I work as an avalanche forecaster for the Scottish Avalanche Information Service. So I usually work in two different areas, either Loch Abba, which encompasses uh, Ben Nevis, Anikmore, Carmel Jerig and Glencoe. There's a number of different things um, that I enjoy about snow. It's an interesting material. It's a complicated foam of ice that's close to its melting point. So it's always evolving, always changing in um, interesting ways. The physics behind it is quite interesting. But it also, it's a fun material to use. It's much more pleasant to ski down a nice snowy slope than it is to walk down it. And also, it just looks pretty. It just, the hills today just look much, I feel much nicer with a good covering of snow on them and I enjoy through the winter season seeing how the snow cover develops, how it changes, how it's always evolving. Snow is actually a high temperature material. In Scotland here we never see or we very, certainly very rarely see snow more than five or ten degrees away from its melting point and um, because of that the molecules, although it's a solid, the molecules in it are close to being, they're quite energetic, they're close to being liquid. In some ways they want to evolve, they want to escape, they want to be able to flow. And you do over time get this um, evolution, a movement of molecules. Scottish snow is it's not unique, but it's quite good in that its evolution is much faster than in other parts of the world. I did get avalanched once. I think it just gave me a bit more sort of appreciation and respect for the Scottish hills, that they can be serious and dangerous places. A bit more energy if well, you well, get well, you. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> You've definitely kind of got to keep a bit of respect for them, for, for the hills and for, for snow. It's one thing I've learned in time avalanche forecasting that sometimes there's occasional little avalanches or events here and there that I think would be hard to predict and could easily catch you out. I've seen people being out on the hill, being in places or in snow slopes that I certainly wouldn't be happy um, going to. A few times I've sort of subtly suggested that I wouldn't go there and that's usually enough to, um, to make them reconsider or yeah, reconsider or go somewhere a bit, a bit safer, a bit more benign. It might be that winters just get more variable, so we have potentially some winters where we have very, very little snow. But I think we'll hopefully, over the next 20, 30, 40 years, still have some decent cold winters where the shape of the jet stream makes us in the colder, more settled, more snowy air and people to get out climbing and skiing as they have done in the past. Yeah, probably the most the thing that upsets me most is like when we have a beautiful snowpack and then it all melts because it's chucking down the rain and I just think, oh, if it's only five degrees colder, this, the skiing would be amazing, there'd be loads of snow, there'd be great cover, we could go here, we could go there, but because it's raining, it's all melted. I think the best thing with this job is just being out a lot in the winter and be able to move around, going within reason where I want, through the hills, travelling through the hills, enjoying the scenery, enjoying the snow and being able to do it at my own pace.